how do you develop the most dangerous thing that you can accomplish in your business in this year, especially if you don't want resolutions, but yet you want results? It's called developing a hacker mentality. And the gentleman is going to talk to us about building a hacker mentality is Barry Moltz. He's the author of the book, Small Business Hacks, 100 Shortcuts to Success. There we go. There we go. And also, he's a host of Business Insanity Talk Radio on Chicago's AM560 Radio. So, Barry, welcome to the call, man. Let's hack away. I appreciate it. I just want to point something out here. You know, this was really the first hack because I don't know if you can see it. They actually spelled business wrong on the side of the book. And so we like hacked off an S just because we didn't have any time for it because we really want to get results. So they had to reprint another 5,000 books. <laughs> That's where we started with this project. I mean, I mean, it could have been worse. They could have spelled it business, B-I-D-N-E-S. -E exactly. <laughs> it could have been worse. Exactly. So, exactly. So, uh, Barry and I, for those of you guys who don't know, Barry and I had met at the Miller Coors Tap to Future uh, uh, program where, uh, where Miller Coors recruits business uh, people, entrepreneurs from all across America to be national business plan judges. Right. And that's where Barry and I had met. And uh, at that time, we awarded uh, to, uh, I think, three or four different entrepreneurs a piece of $250,000 uh, based on a business plan and based on how they pitched us and presented us their idea. So Barry, what is it about entrepreneurship, man? What is it about business, man, that just simply just jacks you up? Well, listen, if I could hold a regular job, I would, you know, I mean, I started with my career at IBM. I worked there for 10 years and then I came again, a manager who always said to me, he said, you know, you said these sales contests, Matt, where first prize, was lunch with him. And I always said to him, well, what second prize? Two lunches with you? And so I said, I can't work for anybody. So I went out and I started my own businesses. I went out of business, the first business, got kicked out of business, my second business. And finally, in the third business, we were able to build it during the internet bubble. We were able to sell it. I was able to pay back the bank, the million dollars I owed them. And my wife tells me I got her back just about the same time. So I just love being able to take an idea and actually see the results of it. That to me is a lot of fun. So here at Business Experience, let's, let's talk about, let's jump right into your book. And by the way, this is what we call, we're, we're, we're developing what we call the social media flash mob. That's right, so, exactly. So if you guys are watching this right now, we would definitely appreciate it if you can comment below, say hello. I think BBC Air said hello. Right. If, you guys, if you guys can share this video, we want to create a social media flash mob to help people hack their way to success in the year ahead. So um, I, I get your table of contents here in your book. Right. Awesome stuff here. Um, let's, let's talk about the quickest way, fastest way to transition. What would you say to fast way to transition from your job to entrepreneurship? Well, the best way to really do it is to, you know, do a side hustle like a lot of people do, but try to get paying customers. That's really the key. And then once you get enough paying customers, somewhere along the line, you're going to have to make that leap. It's not going to be like seamless where, oh, I'm, I, I'm working this much and I got this many customers. I'll be able to make just the same amount of money. You know, Matt, it doesn't work that way. There's still going to be a leap, but at least you're basing that leap, Matt, on something which is paying customers. That's really what it's got to be about. So there's many different chapters of your book. There's startup hacks. There's management hacks, technology hacks. There's customer experience hacks, product hacks. I'm going to concentrate since I'm the money smart guy and this is the movement podcast, I'm going to concentrate today on the money hacks. That's good. Cash. Cool. So let's talk about going and making a sales call. Hack away to making a sales call. What well, we got? The biggest problem people have when they make a sales call is, first of all, they don't identify, does the customer have the pain that you solve, right? And most importantly, do they have the money to actually solve that pain? Because if they don't have the money to solve that pain, who are you selling it to? And then they have a tendency to call on the wrong person inside the company. If it's B2B, they're not calling on a decision maker. Usually they're calling too low. So you got to prepare for it. When you go on the call, you got to see, do they have budget? Do they have the pain? When they make a decision, if they buy your product, what it would get them, all those kinds of things. One of the biggest hacks we put in the book, Small Business Hacks, was what happens when you do a great sales call. I'm sure this happened to you, Matt, where you go make this, uh, this, this uh, meeting and the customer says to you, Matt, I can't wait. I'm going to buy what you're selling. Call me next week. And you're all excited. You're going, I got this huge deal. Hooray, right? This is going to be amazing. You call them next week and they don't return your phone call. Then you email them. 
and you don't hear anything back from them. You call them, you email, you call, you email, and this just goes on and on, and you never hear back from them. So what happened? The answer is, I don't know. But what has happened to you is you're still holding on to the idea that this guy or woman is going to buy from you, so it actually prevents you from moving on to someone else who's really going to buy your product. So in the book, Small Business Hacks, we lay out three letters that you can send to people that will get your response 95% of the time. Because remember, even if they say no, that's a good thing. It gives you permission to really move on. And that's been one of the most popular hacks in the book. I love it. I love it. What about this one? Speaking of uh, uh, the sales call, how about a cold call? Oftentimes people are afraid. The last thing we people do today on their cell phones is actually call somebody. So how do I hack my way to make a cold call and present my business and prospect somebody? I think the best way, I think the idea of calling someone up on the phone and talking to them, I think that idea is dead. First of all, try to call someone that on the phone that you know to connect with them. Imagine trying to call someone up on the phone who you don't know. It's nearly impossible. When people call me out of blue, I'm like, what? You didn't make an appointment? What's, what's going on? Even if I know them. So the idea is how can you warm up that cold call as much as you can through social media these days because Matt there's always a connection to the person you want to get to I believe more than ever in six degrees of separation if I want to go meet Bill Gates or now I really want to meet Jeff Bezos because obviously he's the richest guy in the world now I believe you can get to meet that person someone that can introduce you and that's the work you have to repair for any call you're going to do in other words, getting referrals or warming up through social media, getting up data, collecting on them. So therefore, get some kind of connection, a, a reason why they might be interested in talking to you. Because, you know, if you can get connected to the person, listen, someone, someone emails you and says, yeah, referred to by Barry Moltz. Right now, I may be a bad example, but you're probably going to open up the email versus whatever the general email might be. So that always works. What about hacking away? Here's the next hack number 55. Let's say you make a successful phone call. You can actually have a sales call. Now, how do you close a deal? What's the hack for that? Well, the biggest thing that people never ask is what I call the money question, right? People are afraid to say, you know, who's going to pay for it? And do you have the money? You know, can I get the order? People never, ever do that because they're afraid. And if you've got an opportunity in front of the customer, you got to ask for the order. And I don't believe it's ever too soon to ask for the order. Get it all out in the open. If there's a problem with the money, let's get to it now. I love it. I love it. Cool. Hack number 56 then. Speaking of warming up the deal, how do I use email today? Do even people uh, pick up their emails or open up their emails anymore? How do I hack my way? I think that, that most of us, a lot of us do content marketing through email because I really believe, Matt, you actually can't sell anything to anybody. You've got to be there when people are ready to buy. So I never know when someone's going to have the pain or they want to refer someone over to me. So I have to constantly marketing to them on a weekly basis. Now, people don't want to hear from you. You want to buy something? No, no. You want to buy something? No. Do you want to buy something? You want to buy something? They want to hear about the expertise you can bring. So when they have that problem, they think about you and they go, oh, you know, Matt does this. My friend was just asking about that. Maybe I should refer Matt. But if I don't think about Matt every single week, I'm going to lose that. So that's where content marketing, sending out content-rich emails on a weekly basis, that's what happens. The biggest problem people have is they'll do it once or twice, and then you don't hear from them in six months, and that's a problem. That's right. It's one thing to have uh, data collected, but are you contacting them? Are you touching them? And by the way, that's the reason why I contacted you, because you're constantly in my email. Right. And I never delete your emails. I read your emails because you're always providing value. Um, hack number 58, I like this one, because especially there's a lot of new entrepreneurs that watch this uh, live stream, that, that follow my YouTube channel. Somebody's brand new, they're transitioning from the military, they're going into, uh, into the civilian world. How do I create a social strategy for marketing myself in business? Well, I think the first thing you have to you do is, which issues are you gonna talk about on social media? Because remember, the idea of social media, it's social. You're supposed to help other people solve their problems. So get comfortable with one tool, don't try to do all of them. Put in the search bar things that you think you can help people with and start to become part of the conversation. But here's the key, Matt. You've got to be able to show up every day. And one of the ways you can show up every day is there's a lot of great tools out there that will do some automatic posting for you. Because especially on Twitter, uh, you know, things move very, very, you know, very fast. So they may miss it the first time. The thing you got to be careful about is that let's say there's an earthquake 
uh, in California. And everyone's talking about the earthquake, but you're posting about something else because you're doing automatic posting. That could be a problem. So I think you got to be careful. You still have to monitor all your posts. And when people do interact with you, then you have to make sure you respond. But if you don't respond, then you're just talking at them rather than with them. I love that. And by the way, if you're just tuning in right now to this live stream, you're listening to the Money Smart Guy on the Movement Podcast. And you're also with me at Barry Most, author of the book, Sale, Small Business Hacks, 100 Success. Uh, shortcuts shortcuts to, success. to your success. Shortcuts to your success. Absolutely. Cool. Next one. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to a couple of hacks right here. Um, I'm going to talk about networking. I like face-to-face. -face. I like shaking hands. How do I best create success through networking events? Well, the key thing is, is you've got to show up at different events that you usually show up at. Because one of the things that most of us do is we show up at the same events. We talk to the same six people that we always talk to. And there's nothing wrong with that. Go take them out for a beer. But that's not what you're doing at networking events, right? Make sure you, you spend time with people, but at the same time, mingle. Try to meet new people. The other thing is try to find out ahead of time who's going to be there. For a lot of events, they'll post exactly who's going to attend and then target meeting those specific people. You've got to be proactive. And, and, and it's really good, Matt, now because still the only way to develop the best relationships is really still face-to-face. -face. And I'll tell you, I hope that never goes away. By the way, uh, let's take a, a, a station ID real quick. <laughs> Let, where can we get your book, by the way? Where can we get your so book? So you can go to Amazon.com, just Small Business Hacks, um, and it's available starting on June 18th, but you can order it today. So you can pre-order. Yep. Got Absolutely. Awesome. Amazon will take your money anytime. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, next hack. Um, do job fairs work? Do 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 um, a small business? So if, if, you're, if you're looking to recruit a team, looking to recruit customers, do job fairs work? How do you get the most out of a trade show? Um, you know, out of a trade show? Is oh, your yeah. question? Oh, trade show, a job I, fair. I'm not, listen, I'm not sure job fair. It depends who comes to the job fairs, right? My experience is people that come to job fairs, uh, people that are unemployed for a very long time, or people that are just starting out, you know, are graduating from college. I think if you're looking for people that are just graduating, I think it's probably a good place to go. I think you probably don't want to hire people who have been employed for a very long time, unemployed for a very long time, especially in a full employment economy. So I'd be a little bit wary of that. I think the best way to do trade shows is before you would exhibit at a trade show is to walk the trade show, right? Go around, see who's there, who can you meet. Also try to get an opportunity to speak at a trade show. If you have to pay money to either exhibit or to speak, I'd much rather speak at the trade show than be stuck at a booth. That's it. How, what's the best way to approach people at a trade show? Uh, because, you know, they're selling their stuff and you're selling your stuff. So what's the what's the well, what's the I, think they, I think you have to find out what is their pain, right? Why should they be interested in really talking to me and do some kind of research? What issues or problems is that company really facing? And is there somewhere that we can meet together to be able to work on something? You got to do the homework ahead of time because you're just going up to someone and say, hey, hey, I saw you. Would you like to buy from me? Come on, just buy from me. It doesn't work. Who cares? So how do, how would you how would you find and discover people's pains? What questions would you ask? Um, the kinds of questions you know that I ask is what's holding you back? What's keeping you up at night? If you could change one thing in your business, what would that be? What is your biggest challenge uh, that you have in this business last year? What's one thing that went really right last year? What's one thing that went really wrong? But I will tell you, Matt, if you give people a chance to talk, they'll tell you about their problems all the time. What do you think are the biggest mistakes that rookie or new aspiring entrepreneurs do when presenting their company, presenting the service, or presenting their product? I think they talk a lot about features and benefits, regardless of what pain someone's in, right? They have something to sell. They don't really care if you need it or not. But just wait. I'm not done with my pitch. I want to tell you. Uh, you have to make sure that you target the people. Again, people buy painkillers. They don't buy vitamins. So, for example, you know, what, when you go out and you sell insurance, what are you really selling, right? You're selling the idea that there's this fear that I'm going to leave my family unprotected, right? So the pain is really the fear. And that's the solution that you really have, which is really life insurance or disability insurance or long-term care insurance, right? It's I'm going to be without. And so you've got to, you know, people who buy, who are the people that buy the most life insurance is when you just start a family, right? Because now I'm thinking about my kids. 
right? Why do people, Matt, spend so much money on colleges? Why is the college the perfect business? Because the pain is, I believe my, my kid has a good college education. They'll be better off in life. So I'll spend any money there is to go out and get them a good college education because that will mean a better life. So the colleges charge whatever they can charge. So that's why if I'm my next business, I'm going to open up a university. <laughs> it's the perfect business. Speaking of that, Barry, what's the best hack? If I want to be financially successful in this modern, in this yeah. modern age, is it submit to – like right now, I've got twin girls that are 16. Yep. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, for me, I'm kind of good luck. Good luck. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I don't have a college degree. I right. mean, uh, you know, we, my wife and I, we built a, a seven figure income in a right. multi million dollar company without, she's got the college, she's a smart one between the two of us, but yeah. she never used that college degree today. College degree or right into business uh, and skip college. What, what would you say that? What's a hack to that? I, I think it depends on the kid. I don't believe that. For a lot of people, people are really cut out for college. I mean, to me, right now, when kids go to college when they're 18 or 19, it's just babysitting when they get there, right? It's really just a maturation project. I'd rather see us go through some kind of military or civil service for three or four years after high school and let them mature. Uh, that's why my kids right now, they went to college right away, but they're not going to go to graduate school right away. I want them to work for two or three years. I don't think that college is for everyone. You've got to decide, is it really for you? I think the biggest mistake people make, Matt, is that's the default to go to college. I think that should not be the default. I think that people should proactively say, this is why I want to go. And I think having a gap year or two or three can really benefit most of us. I really and do. What, what the best gap year served, if you're not the military, civil service or- the best civil the, service, right. Peace right. Corps, some of that. What, whatever you want. Where, listen, I listen, both my, my sons are now 22 and 25. What did they do the first six, the first semester of college? They drank. That was the only thing that they did, right? So why can't we get that, do that for the first two or three years working somewhere and drinking rather than spending $60,000 a year and drinking? And, and having to pay for that same beer 20 years, 20 years right. later. Right? right, exactly. Last couple of questions, man. And by, sure. by the way, Barry, thank you so much for being so generous. No, thanks for having me. Helping, helping us out. Um, what's the best way? to get our product, which, which one do I want to do, Hack 66 or Hack 67? Let's talk about this one. I'm excited about this one because I'm, I'm about marketing and branding. How do I get more celebrity endorsement? How do I hack that? Yeah, this is, this is great. This was actually written by uh, one of my friends who's really good at doing this. You've got to find out, you know, first of all, would this person be interested in your product? In other words, it doesn't make sense to try to sell a celebrity a baby stroller or give a celebrity a baby stroller if they have no young kids. So do your research, find out what these people are, are interested, then contact their agent, get to their people, and start a conversation with their people, and then try to send the product in exchange for that they're gonna try it out and show a picture. So there's actually, in the book, they actually lay out every step of the way what you have to do in order to get that celebrity to actually use your product, and you don't go any further unless you've accomplished the first three steps. So there's a very specific thing this woman's been doing for a long time, and she's been incredibly successful getting celebrities pictured with her product. Outstanding. I love that. Would that be the same thing, too, as well? Finding, and it's easier today. I mean, if you're not calling their agent, how about contacting them via social media, their Instagram, LinkedIn? Absolutely. Facebook? I think it depends on the celebrity because I think some celebrities are actively using their Instagram or their Twitter or social media account, and others, their agent or whatever is just doing it. So I think it really, it really depends. I mean, if you want to get to Donald Trump, all you got to do is just tweet him and he's there 24-7. <laughs> gotcha. And last last but not least, what would you say, in, in, if, if we were to wrap this all together, we were all button this up together, what would be your ultimate goal for people watching the show today, aspiring entrepreneurs, transitioning military veterans into the civilian life? What would be the ultimate killer hack to getting the most financially this year and, and, and not experience what they had last year into the year ahead? I think people have to understand, I have this expression, it's called, it's cash flow stupid, right? That business is not about sales, it's about cash. So if you don't understand how to read financial statements, if you don't understand how to read a balance sheet, an uh, income statement, and a, and a cash flow statement, go get some help. Because ultimately, it's not about your sales, it's how much cash you have at the end of the month. That's where you really got to get smart. If you don't know, it's very confusing. I would tell you that 95% of the people can't read a cash flow statement. 50% of the people can't read a profit and loss statement. Go get some help and learn it now. Because if you don't know what happened in the past financially, 
You never know what's gonna happen in the future. Hey, uh, hack. I think that's hack number forty-one. Uh, no, no, no. Cash flow statement. No, hack number thirty-nine. How to read your financial statements. You yeah, had to come up with a hundred. You know, so they're all in there somewhere. Awesome, Barry. Listen, guys. If you haven't done so already, go pre-order Barry's book, uh, Small Business Hacks. Hundred of them in there. Hundred step shortcuts to your success because you know something running a business, Matt, is hard. We can't be prepared for everything. We don't have time to serve. If let's say, for example, you have no to get no, uh, you have to negotiate a lease. It's in here. Let's say you have to go to an unemployment hearing. It's in here. How do you pick a name for your company? It's in here. Those kind of short seven step process to getting things done right now. Awesome guys, thank you very for tuning in, man. Uh, Thanks for thank your time, you. Go Cubs. go Cubs, baby. Here we go. And both That's right. Chicago boys in here tearing up here and and by the way thank God for the uh the heat wave in Chicago now exactly it's like 40 degrees man so something big I hope it's hot for you guys watching the show I hope it's hot for you in your finances in the year ahead thanks for tuning in thank you thank you Barry thank right. you guys commenting right, liking and sharing and uh all right sounds good Barry all right so for those of you guys that's that's on the show uh that's tuned in appreciate you guys uh commenting below Dion Marcos love it Servanda Marquez, shout out from Compton. Uh, Monique Welch, uh, you have to allow people to tell you their pain. That's absolutely correct. Uh, Vanessa Byers, so glad I turned into this. Well, good. We're going to do more of this in 2018. That's my commitment to you. That's the value I provide to you. I want to show you guys that this business isn't hard. You don't have to have advanced degrees and years and years and years of experience to build relationships. It's faster today and more meaningful today to build relationships online so therefore you can take from offline online to offline just like i did here with barry Moats. thanks for tuning in guys thanks for liking commenting please share this page please share our, our our content please subscribe to the youtube channel if you're watching this on youtube as well and make sure if you're watching this on, on facebook you like our page and you stay tuned for more value add i mean earlier today we had tim grover and today i was just full of uh, business conversations today and having you part of the conversation i have on this phone Every day, reaching out to the business community, helping people live more money smart. Thanks for tuning in. That being said, until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.